Okay, here is our screen capture of the lesson that I presented on uh, February 27th, 2011, uh, titled Lip Service. I presented this a sermon at the St. Mary's Church of Christ in Warren County, Tennessee. Uh, the purpose of this uh, screen capture is simply to uh, bring up the scriptures, talk about the scriptures briefly. It, the purpose is not to preach the lesson again, but simply to go over the scriptures that were used. So, uh, without further ado, let's look at the first the lesson text for this particular uh, lesson and all of it will not fit on the screen but uh, most of it will so we'll begin right up here uh, as you'll notice uh, we, get, we begin with John chapter 14 verses 21 through 24 coming out of the New King James it says he who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest manifest myself to him verse 22 Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Now let's really focus in here on verse 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Uh, we should focus on that for a little bit longer. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Again, the title of this lesson is, lip service. It's awful easy to say, I love Jesus, but Jesus says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Not just saying something, but doing something, keeping his word, doing what he would have you to do. So anyway, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Verse 24, he who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Okay, now let's go to our first scripture that we used uh, for this. Coming up on the screen there for you, coming out of Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And, of course, you will recognize this as the Great Commission, where Jesus tells the disciples to go into all the world. So, again, this is the Great Commission, which uh, was, of course, given to his original uh, disciples, and then, of course, uh, comes down to us as well. But anyway, let's look at this. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 says, coming out of the New King James, And Jesus came and spoke spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, notice this, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all, all things that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So here we see that uh, when it comes to uh, lip service. Many people give lip service to evangelism, and that was the purpose. Uh, this was one of the points that I made with this particular lesson, is that so many people give lip service to evangelism, and they say, yes, we should go out and we should reach and teach uh, the lost, uh, but when it comes to their time, their money, their effort, all of a sudden, it turns out it's more talk than it is actual concern about souls. So again, when it comes to lip service, when it comes to evangelism, we should not be concerned with just lip service, but actually carrying out the Great Commission. Now this was the primary scripture that I used. Now the secondary scripture will scroll up. I'm not going to spend much time on it. I'm just going to mention it and move on uh, to the next point. But the secondary scripture, the next scripture that was mentioned during this particular part of the lesson was Colossians uh, chapter 1 verses 27 through 29. You can see it on your screen. And I hope open your own personal Bible study, you will pull this up and read it for yourself. But let's go on to the next point that I made in this lesson. Coming up on the screen for you. Uh, here, uh, the point that's being made is that, you know, we should not be concerned with just lip service uh, when it comes to uh, serving the Lord uh, when it comes to our example. Uh, we need to be careful and not be like the scribes and Pharisees that are mentioned here. This is Jesus speaking, as you'll notice on the screen. From Matthew chapter 23, starting at verse 25, Jesus tell these, tells these individuals, He says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, uh, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Now let's scroll up a little bit further. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Now the point that we, that we tried to make in this particular uh, part of the lesson uh, had to do... Um, 
had to do with living godly lives. Uh, it's very important for us to ju- not only uh, to present a good example to the world, but actually live godly lives and say no to certain things that this world has to offer. The scribes and, the scribes and Pharisees that Jesus is mentioning here in our uh, text that we have on the screen right now, they were more concerned with the outward appearance. If everyone thought they were righteous, that's all they cared about. They did not care about actually living it. So let's go on to our secondary scripture that backs this up, and then we'll move on to our third point. Uh, so the secondary scripture comes up on the screen for you for just a moment, First Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. And again, I encourage you to read that scripture on your own. Now, let's bring up this uh, next scripture. And this next scripture, I use this uh, in relation to our worship. That was the next point in the lesson, having to do with giving lip service in worship. And I use this scripture that's on the screen, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, starting at verse 15. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing. I will also sing with the understanding. Uh, one of the points that I made when I was actually preaching this lesson, and it really made an impact on me, uh, back when I was growing up as a, as a young person, I attended the uh, Trousdale uh, Church of Christ, and there was a man there who, who made the, the point with me that when he was, when he was a young man, uh, there was someone who said to him, uh, it turns out he had a really good singing voice, he was not a member of the church, and someone said, you, you should sing uh, because you've got a great voice, and he told them at that particular time, he said, you know, I can't sing because, you know, my heart wouldn't be in it. He said, I, I, he told me, he said, how could I sing Oh How I Love Jesus when my life did not reflect a, a true love of Jesus? So he was very concerned about that. So that's that's the, the type of point that we're making. It's very important to not only uh, to actually set, just saying things, giving lip service is not what's important. It's the actions behind it. And that's the point in worship. When we worship, it should be to truly to truly uh, worship God and not just going through the motions. And that's the point that we made on this particular uh, point in the lesson. Okay, the secondary scripture that I'll bring up briefly is coming up on your screen right now. Matthew chapter 25, verses 23 through 24. Again, that's a secondary scripture, and I encourage you to read that for yourself. All right, the next scripture that we are going to look at is a very lengthy scripture. I can't get it all on the screen, but we can at least begin with it. And this scripture uh, has to do, uh, well, as you'll notice on the screen, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses uh, 1 through 7, coming out of the New King James Version of the Bible. Uh, now concerning the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know your willingness about which I boast of you to them of Macedonia. Of- to the Macedonians, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal has stirred up the majority. Verse 3, Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that, as I said, you may be ready, lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, uh, we, not to mention you, should be ashamed of this confident boasting. Verse 5, Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously previously promised that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. But this I say, who's, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful, cheer, cheerful giver. Uh, the whole purpose of this particular part in the lesson is I made the point that uh, so many people are, when it comes to giving lip service to acts of benevolence, of course, benevolence is simply a big word for helping people who need help. Uh, but helping people, so many people, uh, so many people who claim the name Christian, uh, they are all for helping people until it requires their time, their talents, their money, and all of a sudden this this willingness and wanting to help others goes away. So there's something wrong with that. And when that happens, you need to understand that you're simply giving lip service to these acts of benevolence. So that was the purpose of that scripture that's on the screen to to draw attention to that. Now we'll pull up the secondary scripture that goes along with that. And I will mention this one because I do have it highlighted here on the screen. Uh, It makes a real important point down here toward the bottom where it says we should not love in word or tongue. That's easy to do. Anybody can give lip service. 
uh, not love in word or tongue, but if you'll notice, it's in deed and in action, in other words, in deed and in truth. Okay, so we'll go to our final scripture, and uh, during this part of the lesson, I made the, uh, the, the I made the point that uh, we should not give lip service to repentance. We should truly repent uh, of the sins that we commit in our lives. So 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 through 10. Coming out of the New King James Version, it says, For even if I have even for even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. For I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Verse 10, For godly sorrow produces repentance. That's the word we really want to key in on. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. But again, uh, the point that I made when I presented this part of the lesson is that we should not give lip service to repentance. Repentance should not be something that we do because we got caught. Repentance, true repentance is, and I made this point when I was actually preaching the lesson, it is a uh, an about face. It is a turning of 180 degrees. You're headed in one direction and now you're headed in another direction. You have changed your direction. That's what true repentance is. It's not giving lip service to repentance, but actually doing it. Okay, now there are I'll pull up the secondary scripture that goes along with this, and that will uh, finish off this uh, going over the scriptures. Again, the purpose of this is not to preach the lesson. It is simply to go over the scriptures. So this is the lesson, the synopsis of what I presented um, on February 27th. 2011 at the St. Mary's Church Christ in Warren County, Tennessee. Hope you have a blessed day.